are you guys excited for Shavuot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great, excited. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to learn some yeah. stories, huh? Well, we're telling the story of Ruth. Yeah. Why do we always tell the story of Ruth at Sha in Shavuot? Well, you see... There once was a man from Bethlehem. No, this isn't the story you suppose. But this one made the other possible, and here is the way it all goes. In Bethlehem was a man named Elimelech. His name means God is King. He lived there with his wife and two sons, but they soon had to leave everything. For famine had struck within Israel, and there was just not enough food. So off to the country of Moab went Elimelech with his whole brood. After a time, Elimelech died and his wife, a widow, became. She persevered and raised her sons. Naomi was her name. Her sons grew up and got married to Moabite women nearby. But after 10 years there in Moab, things started to go awry. One by one, the two sons died and three women were left with no man. So Naomi packed up her belongings and told Orpah and Ruth her new plan. Go back, each of you, to your mother's home, and to my homeland I too must go. May the Lord show you his kindness and give each of you a new bow. She then kissed them goodbye, and they wept and said, We want to go back with you. But Naomi said, You must return home. You are young and can yet start anew. I am old and bitter and cannot have more sons, and the Lord's hand is against me. So Orba hugged Naomi and said goodbye, and soon only two remained from the three. Your gods and your people are here, Naomi said. Ruth, you should remain here as well. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi, and in her eyes, tears started to swell. Please do not urge me to leave or turn back. Wherever you go, I'll go too. Wherever and whenever it is that you die, there I will be buried by you. I know that in Israel Moab is despised, and I may be considered a fraud, but your people will be my new people, and your God will be my true God. Naomi saw that Ruth was determined, and she stopped urging her to depart. Together they journeyed to Bethlehem, an old home, to try make a new start. Soon they arrived, and the town was amazed. Can this be Naomi? The townswomen asked. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant, but instead Mara, the bitter contrast. When I went away, my life was full. I had my family and all I could need. Now the Lord has brought me back empty. My sad misfortune is as he decreed. When Naomi and Ruth first returned to Israel, the barley harvest had just begun. And Ruth said, let me go to the fields to pick up leftover grain behind anyone. Naomi agreed and Ruth went to the fields, trailing the harvesters to glean behind. As it turned out, the field belonged to Boaz, who was as rich as he was kind. Just then, Boaz came to greet the workers. The Lord be with all of you. Then he saw Ruth and asked his overseer, Who does that young woman belong to? She is the Moabite who came with Naomi. She's been gleaning behind us all day. She came early to ask my permission to gather what's left behind or thrown away. Impressed, Boaz went to Ruth and told her, You may gather in my fields daily. Ruth bowed low to him and marveled. Why are you so kind to me when I'm not Israeli? I know all about your kindness and of your support for your mother-in-law. You left your family, country, and gods to come here. That surely takes some chutzpah. May the Lord reward you for all that you've done, for Naomi through all he has dealt her. May your wages be fully paid by the Lord, under whose wings you've come for shelter. Touched by his grace and compassionate words, Ruth thanked Boaz most warmly. I hope I can continue to please you, for you have treated me well and encouraged me. Boaz gave Ruth food to eat lunch by the worker. She was full and still had food to spare. She returned back to work for the afternoon, but Boaz still had more to share. He instructed all his workers to let Ruth continue. Don't tell her to go away. But not only that, he said, leave more grain behind for her to gather each day. When Ruth went home at the end of the day with food and a half bushel of grain, Naomi could barely believe what she saw and begged for Ruth to explain. Where did you gather all this grain today? Blessed be whoever was so kind to you. 
His name is Boaz, and he has promised to let me gather until the harvest is through. Boaz? Naomi exclaimed. God bless him, for he is kind to the living and dead. He's a kinsman to my Elimelech, and I know he'll make sure we're always fed. He is very kind, isn't he? Ruth blushed. Even for a Moabitess, he cares. And true to his word, through barley and wheat crops, Boaz ensured Ruth gleaned her shares. Now Naomi saw all this and began in her mind, for Ruth's happy future, a plan. I must find a suitable home for my Ruth, and what better husband than Boaz, my kinsman? Daughter, bathe, change, and put on perfume, and tonight go to the threshing floor. Boaz will be there, you'll see him lie down, but do not let him see you before. You must uncover his feet and lie down near enough that when he wakes, he'll see you nearby. He will tell you what to do after that. Mother, I'll do as you say and comply. So Ruth went down to the threshing floor and did all as Naomi dictated. When Boaz was sleeping, Ruth uncovered his feet, lay down on the floor, and waited. About midnight, Boaz woke up suddenly and was startled to see a form at his feet. Who are you? He asked into the darkness. I'm Ruth, the servant you let clean your wheat. You are my kinsman redeemer, she said, so spread your wing over me. Tomorrow I will do everything that you're asking for, Boaz replied tenderly. I am your kinsman redeemer, but there's one who's more closely related. If he fulfills his duty as kinsman, I will have to accept that as fated. But if he is unwilling, then as the Lord lives, your redeemer I surely will be. I will buy back all of Elimelech's land, and you and I will marry. So Ruth lay near his feet until morning and rose before early light. Boaz ordered his servants to tell no one of Ruth's visit the previous night. Boaz filled Ruth's shawl up with barley, and home to Naomi he sent her to wait. Ruth told Naomi all that had happened that night. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate. There he met up with his kinsman, the one with more right to Ruth and the land. He assembled a number of elders around, and finally he brought up the matter at hand. Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling our kinsman Elimelech's estate. I wanted you to know so you can buy it if you wish, or before these witnesses abdicate. If you will redeem it, do so, but if you cannot or won't, that is fine. For no one else has the right to do it but you, but I am willing and next in line. I will redeem it, the relative said, unknowingly causing Boaz inner strife. You should know that in acquiring our kinsman's land, you gain Ruth the Moabite as a wife. This is required, Boaz continued, and Ruth's children will inherit in her husband's name. Then I cannot do it, for I won't disrupt my own children's inheritance and claim. So before all the witnesses gathered there at the gate, the kinsmen surrendered to Boaz all rights. The witnesses blessed Boaz, saying, May the Lord make your offspring renowned Israelites. Ruth and Boaz were married, and Naomi's heart was filled with such joy. The Lord did indeed bless their union, and Ruth gave birth to a baby boy. This boy was Obed, and he grew and started his own family, which made his mom glad. Obed's son's name was Jesse, and he also grew up and became a dad. Jesse's son was David, who fought Goliath the giant and won. He became king of God's nation and ruled Israel and Judah as one. So every year at Shavuot, we read through Ruth's story, which occurred during this harvest season. Ruth also reminds us of King David, and for more than the great-grandma reason. For from David's line, after generations, the definitive Redeemer came. A Savior was born in Bethlehem. Yeshua is his name. Ruth's beautiful story reminds us the bloodlines do not affect our redemption. For Ruth played a main part in God's holy plan, despite Moab's perpetual exemption. At Shavuot, God's people made the choice to serve him at two great historic events, choosing his Torah at Sinai and his Holy Spirit some 1,200 years hence. Just like those at Sinai and those at the temple, Ruth made a momentous decision to hear and obey her Redeemer, and to trust in his provision. So on this Shavuot, we repeat here with Ruth, whether from Moab or in some other way flawed, Israel shall be my people, and Yahweh shall be my God. <laughs>